really have necessarily a favorite mythology. It's not like I like Thor better than Zoroaster or something. Like it doesn't. Uh, that's not. That's not how I function because I'm usually comparing things, and I'm just interested in the pieces that I like. Um, and there's no one system of mythology or religion that doesn't have an Achilles heel somewhere, you know, where I go, yeah, this is, re like, I, I really like Buddhism. Uh, there's parts of Buddhism that are like, yeah, I'm not sure I'm cool with that, right? So there's always something where there's like, eh, I'm not sure that, I mean, any conceptual framework has its limits. Um, but if there is a mythology that I grew up with that is sort of near and dear to my heart, because I was raised in a very secular household, all of my religious studies are like anthropologists, sort of learning this as a stranger, um, if there is one that speaks near and dear to my heart, it is Middle Earth. So other people went to church, I was raised in Middle Earth. Like I just, that's, that's what I absorb. And so I will often go back to Middle Earth as a sort of comfy nostalgia trip. Even though I do not agree with uh, many of the tenets of Catholicism. And in fact, when I was young, I didn't even get the Catholic influences on Middle Earth. To me, Middle Earth looked Taoist because you had the evil ring and you had the good rings. And if you destroy the evil ring, the good rings go away too. And I was like, oh, well that's yin yang, that's balance in the universe. You know, so to me, Middle Earth looked much more Celtic, uh, much more pagan and much more Taoist. And it wasn't until later that I realized every good character in Middle Earth is pro-life. You know, like, like, just don't kill. Don't, you know, but Gollum's there and he's trying to kill and the whole fate of the world, just don't kill Gollum, just don't do it, right? Like, it's a bad idea, you know? And so um, that, that was only later when I started doing research. And I was like, oh, that's fascinating. But I really appreciate the craft that Tolkien put in to taking his devout Catholicism and his deep appreciation of Anglo-Saxon mythology and wokenism and finding a way to hybridize those two so effectively. Because he did a lot better, in my opinion, and in his opinion, than C.S. Lewis, who just kind of threw everything in the pot. You know, Narnia is not very well tailored. Like, you've got Minotaurs and Santa Claus, and like, what? Like, it doesn't, huh? Um, and so, and that was one of Tolkien's criticism of C.S. Lewis, because they were friends. He was like, dude, your world's sloppy. <laughs> you haven't actually thought this out, because he hadn't, right? C.S. Lewis would write one book, and then be like, oh, maybe I'll write another, oh, maybe I'll write another. Meanwhile, Tolkien's like agonizing over Middle Earth for 20 years before he even writes one book. You know, his world is a lot more cohesive and um, also, he, he wasn't, Tolkien wasn't fond of Narnia because it's an allegory, not a metaphor. It's a one-to-one -one relationship. Aslan is Jesus. Full stop. Like, you can't interpret Aslan in any other way. You know, he's not Moses, he's not Zoroaster, he's not the Buddha, he is Jesus. And Tolkien thought that was a bit fascistic. Like, it was, it was being didactic towards the reader saying, you must interpret my story this way. And Tolkien was like, no, 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 I don't want allegory, I want metaphor. So, people look at Lord of the Rings and they say, oh, it's a metaphor for World War II, right? The ring is the atomic bomb, and Sauron is the Nazis, and Saruman is the Soviets, and Tolkien Hello? is like, you've got your head up your ass, and you're talking, and you're like, that oh, there you doesn't are. parse. Because if that was the case, then the ring never would have been destroyed, it just would have been shared amongst the allies. You know, like, it doesn't, it doesn't, act, it doesn't line up as a one-on-one allegory, but if you want to see it metaphorically that way, you can. You can also look at it in different ways. That's why it was so powerful when Lord of the Rings came out right after 9-11, because people suddenly felt there was an evil force coming after us, and so this story spoke to them. Even though, again, it, Al Qaeda and the Ring don't line up. Like, that doesn't make any sense, but the, the emotions and the metaphor have a resonance.